Welcome to MSP Cybersecurity Conversations. I'm Harriet from Geocom, part of the cybersecurity team, and I'm joined today by Dave from Microsoft with a really interesting topic of AI in cybersecurity. Um, so thanks so much for joining us, Dave. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah. Um, hi, Harriet. Thanks for inviting me along. Really, really pleased to be here. Um, so my name is Dave Morrow. I work for Microsoft and I lead our security channel for uh, SMB in the UK. Awesome. Very exciting job, I'm sure. I'm sure you get to hear about all the new up and coming things from Microsoft, which is pretty cool. Definitely um, moments, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, AI is such like a, a cool, trendy thing at the moment. And AI is obviously relatable to most things in the world, but in particular, cybersecurity. Um, so how would you define where, like the context of AI in cybersecurity? Yeah, so, so it's a really interesting um, topic and we get some, one we get asked about a lot at the moment. Um, I guess the, the first thing to say is that it's really, you know, we're in a really exciting era of computing at the moment. And I think we've got um, certainly some exciting times ahead and generative AI is transforming and will transform how work gets done by, you know, kind of augmenting and amplifying that human human capability. And I think if we think about it for years, right, AI has been around powering uh, experiences behind the scenes, ranging from searches and, and social media and what content is served up um, in terms of the videos and other things that we watch. Um, and it's just kind of there in our digital lives and, and has been for a while. And I guess we sometimes even don't even realize it's there. Um, and, and actually at Microsoft, we've been using AI for a long time as well, right? So it's it, it's used extensively in our products. Um, and, you know, I guess what's changed, if we think about it, what, what what's new, what's different? And for me, I think it's the the large language models that we're now leveraging. And the AI is, is you know, in turn leveraging itself to, to serve up uh, responses. And, and some of those responses are even brand new content, right? Um, and I think I think that for me is 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 the clear difference, right? It's it's um, the large language models we're we're leveraging, um, and the fact that it's generative AI now. And I a fun a fun stat for you, if there is such a thing. Um, yes, please. Yeah, um, I I love this when I heard it recently. Um, so it was talking about how long it's taken certain things to get to a hundred million uh, users. Um, and so it took um, the mo mobile phones about sixteen years to get to that landmark. It took Ooh. Facebook four and a half years to get to 100 million users um, and chat gpt which is many of you will know is 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 kind of one of the components of our our ai uh, solutions got to 100 million users in just three months um wow so uh, like i say if we if we think about what's changing what's new i think that really sums up um you know that acceleration and that change that we're seeing yeah, and chat GPT made such a difference with AI because I think a lot of people hear of AI and they think, oh, it's not nothing to do with me. But actually then tools like chat GPT come out and suddenly you can make a meal plan if you're looking for you know, a meal plan on a certain amount of calories. You can make your workout plan for the week and you can also use it to just excel yourself in your own role. And it's not just, you know, computers are coming for us or anything like that it's like whoever's going to adopt these AI tools and use them within their role are the people who are going to go far I think um yeah maybe I should have a little caveat in everything I do <laughs> half done by chat GPT <laughs> uh, you know I think right I think it's it, it is exactly about that it's about um you know how can we like as I said before uh complement and augment that human capability um and so, you know, we've, we've you, you point out there that, you know, it's not just about security for, from an AI perspective. And of course, Microsoft has developed a number of different um, AI solutions. We've got one for our, for productivity, for, you know, for our office suite um, and a few others. But of course, we have security as well. And I think that's um, that's certainly my, um, you know, subject matter expert, if you like, um, expert, my area of expertise is, is there. So, um I'll tell you a little bit more about what Security Copilot is and what it looks like, and yeah, it's much more than just Chat GPT. And I think there's uh, that you know you draw parallels between it, and of course we heavily use it. Um, but we've actually spent um, thousands of engineering hours developing um, Security Copilot, um, and you know the, one of the first things we did was um, 
you know, develop the, the, the large language model um, for security. So this was not about necessarily detecting and, and, and catching uh, threats when we were looking at the security model, but actually just understanding um, the security language that's used out there. So, um, you know, feeding it with security logs and attack telemetry um, to, to make it more intelligent, essentially. Um, and then we've done a whole bunch of other stuff, right, to make that task specific model uh, relevant secure for security, um, leveraging our global intelligence network and the threat signals and telemetry that that generates to train it. Of course, the inputs from our our, our various different um, security products across the portfolio. Um, so it's 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 been um, a huge task, as I say, thousands of engineering hours have gone into it, um, but we. You know, we're now at the point because I should also say at this point it's not actually out yet. It's coming very soon. Um, mm -hmm. We have a few customers in private preview, some here in the UK. Um, and I guess for me, it's one of the most exciting um, developments uh, that I've seen in, in my career in, in IT security, for sure. Um, so I think it is going to be, you know, we use the term a lot, but genuinely feel that it's going to be a game changer when we think about the things it can do, how it can help our, and work alongside our customers. Um, you know, even things like um, being able to reverse engineer malware um, is something that really only senior analysts in security can do. And that's something that Security Copilot can do for you. Just say, hey, reverse engineer this. And then you can understand that uh, the kill chain and how that piece of malware behaves and operates. So, so yeah, just some really, really exciting stuff coming from, um, from Security Copilot. There has been so much buzz about Copilot in general. Um, everyone's been on YouTube and watched your videos of, over the last few months, haven't they? But to know that there's something coming specific for security and allowing maybe more junior staff to really understand security as well, just with a little help from Copilot, it's really exciting. And the more we know about malware, the more we know about threats, the more we can do to defend ourselves as well. And we can take everything you're learning because you've had all these hours of engineering going into the products, that's not going to stop, I'm sure. I mean, I would imagine that Microsoft are going to continue to grow that product and perhaps even invest further into security. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think we, we can definitely talk about the um, the investment, but there was, there was, I guess, something you said there really um, reminded me of something, which is, you know, what I like, one of the things I like and really makes sense to me is the name Copilot. And there's that really basic analogy uh, that I know you and I have, have talked about before, but I think it just works and I like it. Um, and that's the kind of analogy around, um, you know, having an autopilot on a, on a plane. Um, and when there's a problem, that autopilot typically would disengage and the pilots then have to fly the plane at that point. You know, it's down to the pilot and the co-pilot. Um, and, you know, the, the co-pilot will, will ask, uh, sorry, the pilots will ask the co-pilot to perform various tasks and run checklists while whilst they fly the plane. Um, and the co-pilot will, will take that command in a natural language, right, and, and go and uh, perform that task and then report back again in natural language and make some suggestions based on the output. And then, um, the, you know, the two of them working in conjunction could hopefully overcome the, the problem. And that, for me, is a really great analogy of how co security co-pilot is going to work with our customers. Um, yeah, and I love that. I think that's so relevant. I think, um, like we said, when um, the, the people who are going to adopt the software and use AI to, you know, it, help themselves in their role, are the ones that are going to succeed. We're not trying to replace anyone, right? All we want to do is give more back. And Copilot is like the, the perfect word for it when you explain it like you just have. Yeah, you're absolutely, you know, human ingenuity and expertise is always going to be um, a, you know, a vital component of, of our defence. And it's about having that technology that can augment those capabilities and, and skill sets um, with the, you know, the speed um, and rapid learning of AI. That's that's really what Security Copilot is all about for, for us at Microsoft. Yeah, I can't wait to see it and get my hands on it and I'm do everything. <laughs> so excited about it. Yeah, for sure. And, and actually, you know, sorry, you did ask a question there, which was around investment. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously, AI is an area Microsoft is investing in heavily and will continue to do so. Um, but in terms of specifically cyber investment, um, you know, we're about mid halfway through a four year cycle investment cycle where our CEO committed to invest 20 billion dollars over that four year period. So it's five billion dollars a year. Um, 
into specifically into security and that goes into a, a whole range of things as you would have you know you would imagine um so you know research and development of our of our products of course um, and then we have a team of eight and a half thousand analysts um that are responding to uh, alerts that are generated uh, or that can't be sorted by that machine learning i mentioned earlier that we use already in our global intelligence network um as as uh, and our um, AI capabilities, of course, um, and they're looking at what's going on um, across the globe. We graph the entire internet as well as taking those signals. Um, and that gives us just a really high fidelity picture of what's happening um, in the cyberspace. And of course, it feeds um, and helps our products become better. And therefore, it, it helps better protect our customers too. So um, yeah, there's there's a ton of investment going in uh, I think the uh, you know the only other thing I can really mention you know we can't talk too much about futures without NDAs and all that kind of good stuff. But um, in the last quarter, we released about 150 different um, uh, product updates and enhancements releases, um, and we've got about the same, so about 150 planned in the next few weeks too. Um, so the pace of change is 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 rapid, um, and I guess the last point to make on that would be that. Our products are all cloud-based from a security point of view. In fact, most of, of Microsoft's products are now. Um, and what that means is we're evergreen. So when those features, releases, updates, enhancements become available, um, the customers have access to them kind of immediately, right? They don't have to upgrade or patch or, 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 or change anything. It will just be in their portal the next time they log in. So um, it's great that we're innovating and accelerating, um, but it's also great that our customers kind of have, have access to it immediately. Yeah, because in a market like security, products are always evolving because the threats are always evolving. So if you, you know, spot something and you can find a fix for it to make it available to everyone almost immediately is is brilliant. That's what we want, isn't it? Um, but an investment at that level of 20 billion, I mean, Microsoft, I think, probably lead the way in a lot of things. Um, I think that's a fair comment. And if you're investing that much money, not you personally, Dave, um, if Microsoft are investing that much money, then it's something if I was a vendor, if I was an MSP, it's I'd, I'd be following it. I'd be looking at it and paying more attention to it. Um, but if you've got that many people, what was it, eight and a half thousand analysts as well? That's an incredible yes. amount. Yeah, I mean, it has to be because of the size and scale of the network, right? I, I haven't mentioned a scary number that I know you, you've heard before, which is the 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 t amount of telemetry that network generates is a, is about sixty five trillion threat signals every day, which is crazy, right? So, as I said, we use machine learning, we use AI, uh, but then we also have the analysts to dig into either the alerts that are flagged or the alerts that can't be sorted automatically. Um, so, yeah, just a, a a crazy amount of data and and, and activity going on. Um, from from those analysts and that team, um, and of course, you know, the customers get the ultimately get the benefit of this. And you mentioned MSPs, you know, those guys too as well can can either subscribe to that threat intelligence uh, from us um, or or benefit from having it somewhere in their network. And I think that's something we've said to cust. I've, you know, I've certainly said to customers in the past is, you know, if you're not using any of of, of the Microsoft security portfolio. Um, you're missing out on that data. It is the largest, must be the largest um, civilian intelligence network on the planet anyway. So why would you not want the benefit of that that threat intelligence um, as part of your um, cyber defences? You know, it, it just makes sense. Yeah, 100%. And throughout all of these conversation videos that we've recorded, the thing that always comes up and it always finds its way back is the fact that in order to be secure and defend yourself, you need a whole host of things. You can't just put one thing in place and be like, cool, done. You know, you need to look at email, you need to look at malware, you need to look at what happens if you get targeted with ransomware. There's so many things out there to think of. But I mean, like you said, 65 trillion. I think you told me that number about a week ago and my head still hasn't caught up with how big that number is. That's a lot of threat signals, but like you say, you've got the right people on the right seats looking at those threat signals. Um, and yeah, that that's pretty cool. That's pretty powerful. It must be globally the largest, you're right. 
I think it I think it has to be. I certainly haven't heard of, like I say, a civilian uh intelligence network that, that's bigger. And it's so valuable to us for for like like you know reasons you and I just talked about. But also when we think about things like AI that we we, we talked about at the top of this this um conversation, you know, AI generally gets smarter when you train it on large, varied sets of data. Um, and so we have we have exactly that, a large, varied set of data that we can train our our AI on. So um, you know, there's benefits to customers, there's benefits to us. It's just a phenomenal thing to have. And um, yeah, it, for me, it's it's another, you know, like I said, security co-pilot, I think is is a game, genuinely believe is a game changer. But I think um, if there was one other thing that people ask me, you know, what would you call out in terms of um, Microsoft's um, differentiation in the market, it would have to be that intelligence network. It's, you know, super, super powerful. Yeah, and it's and it's worldwide. It's not just what's happening in the UK, it's happening worldwide. So yeah, really powerful because you can see probably trends moving across the globe. I mean, that's a whole other conversation, isn't it? I'll just uh yeah, yeah not get I so mean, excited about that. <laughs> you're right though, your mind goes in different ways, like trends, as you say, you know, different verticals, different industries for customers, different sizes of customers, then you've got kind of state sponsored um versus private kind of uh, activities, and there's some trends and things there. Um so yeah, there's just uh, a huge amount we can do with that intelligence um, that, as I said before, really helps to benefit, you know, not only us, but most importantly, our customers. Yeah. And the end user. Right. Um, So we've touched on this before, but what I thought was quite an interesting way of looking at, at security is how we've got products like Copilot, so AI defending, and we've also got AI attacking. So we've got this AI versus AI thing going on, haven't we? Um, so the importance of being able to respond at machine speed it is critical, right? Because you've got AI creating these attacks, so therefore we need it to respond. Um, so how does Copilot fit in with responding at machine speed? Yeah, so so there's a couple of things there I think that that I would call out, and you're right, at Copilot Security Copilot is definitely um, a way we can help customers respond at machine speed and scale, um, just by being able to, as we said before, you know, ask really simple basic questions like, you know, um, show me my latest um, incidents or analyze this incident, and then Copilot will kick off a bunch of commands and go and collect a load of data and present that back. Um, in a very simple form, you know, natural um, language, um, as well as provide links and suggestions of what can be done um, or what you should do. Uh, you know, I guess the one example to put it to just to really frame it, give you an example, um, is, is a kind of phishing attack. And if we say, you know, have I, has this phishing attack compromised any machines? Cobalt can go off. Uh, it knows the context, right? And it'll, uh, you know, it'll go off, kick off those commands, and it'll come back with a you know, a list of machines that the email has been sent to, where the email came from, a list of machines that have clicked on the link or opened the attachment. Um, and then it can even look at things like um, suspicious logon attempts from those machines, from that smaller subset of machines, and present that all back to you in seconds. Um, so when we think about responding at machine speed, I think Copilot is going to be um, instrumental uh, for sure. But the other thing I would say um, for us when we think about that is something we've had for a while, which across our platform, um, so our security platform, which covers you know all endpoints, email, um, identity threats, um, you know data, um, applications, clouds, and and you know just just your entire digital estate effectively. Um, because that that platform is integrated, we correlate signals across the platform, um, and that enables us to make really smart decisions with high confidence about actually taking action, so blocking. Um, so when we think about st- stopping threats at machine speed, I think automation is a, a huge part of that. And because our platform, like I say, is integrated and we correlate those signals, it means we can take those actions and stop those um, those threats, issues, incidents, whatever you want to call them, as early as possible in, 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 that, in that kill chain, that, that, that cycle. Um, so that for me, you know, AI, yes, definitely, but also the automation we have built into the platform today that that customers, um, you know, many customers around the globe already have. Yeah, two really powerful tools, AI and automation. And automation is great for all the reasons you just said, but also it saves us so much time. And, you know, as an MSP, if you're wanting to see how you can increase profitability, then looking at different automation tools is definitely one way to go. Um, automation and AI are just like 
I feel like everyone's just going to be sat back in an office chair, reclined, heads <laughs> behind, hands behind their head. Easy, job done. <laughs> just working, everything take care of itself, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You see it come in, you see it go out, yep. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Ideal world, right? <laughs> I think, you know, it's definitely going to make us smarter. It's going to make us um, be able to do more. It's going to level people up. Um, you know, like like I said, more junior analysts are definitely going to be leveled up by things like Copilot. Um, and automation is going to take care of the things that, um, you know, don't need that kind of expensive um, resource, which which is us, the humans, um, for, you know, to take care of it. But I think the other thing you, you mentioned there is around MSPs is, 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 it, is an important point, right? Because um, so I mentioned our private preview customers on Copilot earlier um, and those private, some of those private preview customers do have um, managed security service, uh, managed service security providers. Um, I'm trying my best not to use acronyms today, um, <laughs> which we all love. Um, yeah. and, and, and where we have a customer with um, uh, a managed service security provider, um, then they're also getting access to, to, to Copilot, security Copilot. And what that means is it's the three of us working together to help better protect the customer. Um, so there's absolutely ways that Copilot will not just only benefit our customers, but is also going to benefit our MSPs too, for sure. Oh, yeah, it's definitely something MSPs want to be excited about. It's not at all to bypass them at all. Um, it's something, just another um, string in their bow. I don't know, something like that. I'll go. Let's go with that. Why not? Yeah, it works. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's all really fascinating things. Obviously, like say, NDAs and stuff, I mean, you can't talk about too much of what's coming in the future, but is there anything that we need to be keeping our eye out for? Do we have information on when Security Copilot might might be teasing us? Um, I don't, I couldn't say. I mean, what, what I could say is it's, it's soon, right? So when I say soon, I know that could be next year, <laughs> today, um, soon, you know, in, in a few months, I would say. Um, and like I say, Customers are already in private preview, so it's out there, it's working. Um, what we're just obviously being very diligent about before we we, we release it on on mass, um, but but very soon. I know um, some one of our other co-pilot um, products for the office suite um, is due. I, I I around November time. I, I, yeah, I think, I, I think November's time. right. Yeah, something like that. So we're going to see, like like we said earlier, you know, there's lots of co-pilot security isn't the only one. And we're going to see lots of these, um, uh, you know, come to market very soon. So do watch this space. Um, they will be here. Um, but some of those other updates I, I mentioned, um, you know, we had updates, key updates for Sentinel, um, allowing users to automate some detections based on our threat intelligence. Um, we had some updates to our identity suite. Um, where customers are now able to automate the um, the joiner mover lever process and workflows, which is which is really really good and really useful. Um, and then uh, our Intune, so our mobile device management platform, also had a machine learning uh, mode added to help customers identify the best settings for those devices, um, as well as some security practice practices for those devices. So there is just uh, you know. Like I said earlier, the pace of change is is really rapid, but this and and because of that, there's so much good stuff that that's available to customers. And as I said before, available immediately in their in their in their management platforms. Um, so just do keep an eye on what's coming. There's lots of places you can subscribe. So head over to our website if you want to subscribe for those those kind of alerts, and you'll get notified. But of course. Our customers, you know, their administrators will be notified of enhancements and, and features as and when um, they become available. So, yeah, just w watch this space. Yeah, yeah. And that is all we can say. Watch this space. As soon as we know anything about Security Copilot, um, we will be very loud about it. I think we're already being very loud about Copilot, to be honest, just the Office Suite version. Um so yeah, loads of really cool things, literally just around the corner. Some really cool things that have already been released. Um, and yeah, I would just urge everyone to really keep an eye on Microsoft, see what they're up to, because it's always going to be exciting, isn't it? For us uh, cybersecurity folk, it's always exciting. <laughs> I'm certainly not going to disagree with that. I think definitely, you know, take a look at Microsoft uh, for sure. If you're if you're a customer or, or a partner, you know, or an MSP, like we said earlier, the, the development has been phenomenal over over the last few years, and um, to the point now where we lead the way in about eighteen 
18 ish, maybe 20 different analyst categories across our security platform. So the products um, are best of breed in their you know, individual areas and components. Um, but as a platform, that's when it really comes together and is really valuable to customers because it reduces operational complexity and cost, of course. Um, and I guess, again, to put an MSSP, uh, so a managed service security provider twist on this, um, you know, I've spoken to a few that have said, you know, by standardizing on, on, on Microsoft's security platform, they've actually been able to provide their customers with a better service because they're, they're more, uh, they have deeper knowledge on the platform by specializing and also reduce their costs as well, right? Why try and provide a service on 25 or 30 different vendors um, when you can standardize on, um, you know, I was going to say just Microsoft, but maybe there's one or two more um, that you, you need you need to provide a service on, and that's great. Yeah. I think there's still some efficiencies, um, you know, in terms of operations and cost that can be achieved through um, through 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 adopting the the Microsoft security platform. Oh, definitely. And we're seeing it with most of the vendors we work with, where they um, maybe specialise in one area. They're now sort of branching out to look into other areas so they can be similar to you, being able to offer more than one thing. It makes you more appealing. If you need a different vendor for a different tool, that's lots of different invoices. That's lots of different logins. That's just a headache. So, yeah, definitely bringing as much as you can consolidated is Again, another way to be more profitable when we go back to the automation as well. Yeah. But I mean, that was all really, really interesting, Dave. Thank you so much. Um, AI and cybersecurity is going to be one of those topics that is, is going to prick up so many ears and so many people are going to want to, hit, want to learn about it as well for the next however long. This isn't just a now thing. It, it's a forever thing, right? Yeah, I, like I said, for me, it's going to change the way um, we we think about IT security, especially you know immediately. It will be it will be focused on SOC uh, analyst use cases, and so those those people in particular um, will, will will change the way they work for sure. And then I think yes, as as we move forward and and we um, release more use cases, um, and it gets out into the wild as well, right? When 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 it gets out to customers on mass. There's going to be some amazing suggestions that come from our, our customers and partners that we, we won't have thought of yet that we'll we'll implement. Um, and so, yeah, it's just going to be, um, as we said, exciting times. Right, I think all of us in tech now um, are, are, you know, just got an amazing few years ahead of us of, of, of development and, and change. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's um, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to, to what happens next. It's up to us to just keep ourselves up to speed now, isn't it? Yeah, Easy that's, that's the done. tough part. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess on that point, you know, I probably haven't done it justice, right? So again, please do head over to our website if you want to learn more about Security Copilot or any of the other copilots. There's a ton of information, as, as you would probably imagine. So please do head over there um, and check that out. And I'm sure um, the content over there will, will explain it much better than I have. <laughs> we'll be sure to some people that way. Um... But again, thank you. Really, really great. Really informative. Um, we'll let you know when this goes out so you can see your face on the big screen. Um, but until next time, Dave, thank you. Thank you. Absolute pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, speak to you again soon.